evening, everyone. I'm Carrie Sharp. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. I like Medical Mondays because we always learn something together, and we're going to learn a lot tonight and hopefully help you out if you've been in pain. And this, by the way, is your chance to call in and get some advice for free. So stand by for our topic here. It's called PAD, or Peripheral Artery Disease or Arterial Disease. I have Dr. Dan Wonder from Premier Radiology here with me today. Thank you for being here, Dr. Wonder. Thank you for having me. This is a mouthful. Mm -hmm. It's one thing that you see and treat, but it's, but it's a lot of what you treat. What is PAD? Peripheral arterial disease, simply put, is hardening of the arteries. It's plaque formation in the arteries. A lot of people over the age of 50 have it. Mm -hmm. It not only affects their legs and their arms, but mostly their legs, but it affects their heart and their carotid arteries to their brain. Um, as a radiologist that treats this process, we primarily focus on everything outside the heart, of course. That's cardiology territory. Um, but it, it restricts the blood flow to those areas of the body mm -hmm. and then it causes symptoms so we work to treat that. As I was reading up on this it seemed like PAD is kind of one of those ticking things that's kind of like here's a clue here's a clue here's a clue to something much bigger and bad that can happen a heart attack a stroke something like that is that fair? That, well, that's very fair that's very true um, people you know they as they progress along they may notice certain little things especially with their legs which mm -hmm. is where we kind of focus mostly as a radiologist but um, they may, you know, think they're just getting older mm -hmm. um, as because they're, as they're walking, their legs are tired or they're crampy and they just think, well, I've just gotten older, I have arthritis, my back's a problem. But in reality, the blood flow gets restricted because there's less getting there and then they get symptoms and gets crampy and it limits their ability to do things. And a lot of people don't seek care as soon as they right. should. And yes, they wait too long and then the arteries can get totally blocked and we can still open them, it's just more challenging. Um, but if those are good signs, you know, for people that, you know, could have disease processes in the heart, a chest pain's a warning sign, TIAs or mini strokes are for the, mm -hmm. you know, warning signs for not enough blood flow to the brain. So those are all very, very important things to keep in mind. You mentioned it, and I, as I put on Facebook today that we were going to be talking about this, one of my Facebook friends said, yeah, that pain's called getting old. <laughs> but how do you know if you're just having pain in your legs and it goes away when you sit down and you rest, that it's not just you're getting old? Well, I mean, there's a lot of older people that do a lot, you know, things such as, you know, marathons and yeah. such like that. So it's just not getting old. I mean, those are signs that there are things going on, whether it's, you know, a stenosis in your back and we have to figure these things mm -hmm. out clinically when they come to us as a radiologist too in, in clinic. You know, do they have spinal stenosis? Do they have arthritis in their joints? Do they have blockage in their arteries? And by examining the patient, using some of the radiology tests that people may be familiar with, like CT scans or mm -hmm. ultrasounds and physical exam, we can sort out if there's a problem in one of those areas and then direct our therapy toward those things. I want to invite people to call in. If you've been experiencing pain in your legs or you know that you have hardening of the arteries, go ahead and call in. Give Dr. Wonder um, a chance to answer your questions. The number is at the bottom of the screen. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call or that's 7587. We'll keep that number up for you. But I want to back up a few steps. You are an interventional radiologist. Again, a mouthful. Mm -hmm. What is that? Everyone knows what a radiologist is mm -hmm. pretty much. They read x-rays and CTs and ultrasounds, look at babies, you know, all this kind of stuff. An interventional radiologist takes that as a building block basically and then has special training after that where we use those modalities, what they call them, you know, those techniques to guide therapy inside of people through tiny little incisions and holes using catheters and balloons and special devices to treat cancer, mm. fix aneurysms, open arteries, you know, um, just do biopsies to find about, about tumors. That's what we do. So we use those imaging tools to guide us inside your body without having to make an incision. Open you up, yes. which often can lead to more pain, greater chance of infection, more less recovery. downtime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you actually went to medical school and then did several years on top of that, yes, which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what made you interested in this? Um, well, my father was a radiologist that helped, you know, kind of mm -hmm. spur my interest a little bit. And then I'm a very much of a hands-on kind of person, like to do, do things, build things. And uh, that kind of 
shoveled me between orthopedic surgery and mm -hmm. radiology and once I found out that there was a specialty interventional radiology subspecialty that really pushed me that direction because mm -hmm. I had a love of imaging and being able to diagnose things in people and then fix them at the same time was really a really a, a neat thing to do so let's start back at the very beginning of PAD again peripheral arterial disease and if someone says wow I wonder if that's what I have how does this start you related it in some of my notes to plumbing bad plumbing how does it go together well it's you know again it's it, the biggest thing is you know most people have arteries that you know, when you're young you have normal arteries mm -hmm. that are wide open and as you age and mostly based on your genetics which you inherit from your parents as well as smoking those are about the two biggest factors you build up plaque diet has an effect too you know mm -hmm. to some degree you build up plaque which basically narrows the artery down just like like you said like a you know, plumbing in an old house, it gets junk in the inside yeah. of it. So <laughs> things don't drain through the pipes as well, blood doesn't flow as well, and then that causes symptoms. The muscles at the bottom of those arteries, when you work them, they need oxygen and, and food. And if, you know, if the pipe is not the size it's supposed to be to get those nutrients, that oxygen there, then and get the waste products away, mm -hmm. then the muscles start to cramp. Is that why we're talking mainly about leg pain? Because that's farthest from our heart, so the oxygen's having the hardest time getting down there if you have the plaque? It is, but it's the same process in the heart. Chest pain from a heart attack is the same exact thing. You know, it's just like a heart attack of the legs. Ah. You're working those muscles in the leg or you're working the heart and you stress it to the point where you can't get enough oxygen to it, the lactic acid builds up in there. Like, you know, you get sore muscles after you ran or worked out. Mm -hmm. That can happen real quickly in people. And then what happens is that it starts to cramp and ache. And you have to stop whatever you're doing and rest mm -hmm. and let the blood flow catch up with what's going on, clean out all that stuff, get some oxygen there, and then you're, you're good to go. Now, maybe only for a short distance again, and then you start it again, but that's a huge sign that you've you got some narrowing going on. And it happens in the heart, like I said, same way. What kind of pain, leg pain, are we talking about? Are we talking about pain that stops you in your tracks, or you're just kind of like, man, my, pa my legs are kind of sore. I'll sit down in a little while and rest. It's usually worse than that it could start like that um, but more it's first you get you know people have different kinds of pain but it mostly it does really it, it really cramps you up pretty bad mm -hmm. and makes you just want to stop and rest um, and it, it, it comes on gradually that's the thing that's so you know it's kind of sinister about it is because it starts out slowly you know and you feel more tired than mm -hmm. crampy because the tiredness is the one of the initial symptoms and uh, as it progresses, then it gets to that crampy pain that stops you. You can have num numbness in the legs for the same reason. Uh, the legs seem to hurt even at rest because the, the process gets so bad. Okay, very good. I promise we take as many calls as we can get to today. We do have a caller. Mike, thank you for being with us tonight. What's your question? Uh, my question is, uh, I've been woke up, I've been waking up a lot with nocturnal leg cramps and uh, real bad and the only way I can get the cramps to go away is to get up and walk. I mean, they get really bad. And I went and got some Doppler, uh, I got some Doppler uh, ultrasound treatments for both vein and arteries. And they said that I was uh, about like a guy uh, that uh, at my age said the, the plaque buildup was about normal. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to get your comment from your perspective on that. Thanks a lot, I'll hang up and listen. Okay, thank you Mike for calling in tonight. What little bells go off in your head when you hear about Mike's symptoms? A uh, leg pain at rest can be several things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it can be hardening of the arteries. Um, usually, it's more common, like I said, to, for activity to bring that pain mm -hmm. on, unless it's rather far advanced. And then, it, then it can happen at rest. Um, people, there are certain things like restless leg syndrome and things like that that aren't really directly related to hardening of the arteries that people can have, um, and sometimes. The, um, you can have pain from your back or from pinched nerves that mm -hmm. can cause that kind of pain. It's, you know, it's not uncharacteristic, especially if you're laying flat and that's the bad position for you. And you get up and you start to move and you can kind of lubricate those nerves a little bit and get rid of some of that pain. So that's a lot of the challenge many days for us is to try to figure out which of those two things, the arteries and vein, or the arteries more than the veins, or the nerves are really causing the problem mm. in the back. And, and we, what tells you? What's your diagnostic test to do that? A lot of times it's just experience and being able to, you know, 
examine the patient mm -hmm. and see what they have going on and the kind of history they give you and you listen to them they can tell you um, sometimes you know we resort a lot of times to ultrasound dopplers like he referred to like Mike referred to um, to let us know if there's a narrowing they're they're pretty accurate but not always right um, we have other levels of diagnosis we can go to uh, CT uh, we can do a special CT scan to see the arteries with just a little IV injection oh, wow. contrast as an mm -hmm. outpatient to see if there's a blockage um, and then sometimes we go straight to what we call an arteriogram where we put you to sleep and insert the catheter in the artery, take the pictures and if there's a blockage go right ahead and go down and balloon it or stent it or cut the plaque out of it to open up the vessel. Um, usually on the last one we have a pretty really high suspicion mm -hmm. that there's something wrong so we go right to that. If it's a low suspicion we may go to one of the non-invasive tests that I, I mentioned because that's real easy for the patient. They can do it, they can go home, they don't have to have anybody with them and stuff like that, so. And then you can make your decisions and, yeah. and proceed. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, more of your calls, if we can get them, and more about PAD, stay with us. Dr. Sean Pruitt has spent his career in medicine, dispensing expert advice, and helping patients get on the road to recovery. Now Dr. Pruitt is here to help you. Introducing Pharmacist On Call on News Channel 5 Plus. Staying healthy is on everyone's mind. Don't miss your chance to get free advice. Watch Pharmacist On Call with Dr. Sean Pruitt. The first Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. on News Channel 5 Plus. If you want to shed the fat and sculpt your body to get that slim, sexy look of your dreams, then you need to stop working out. Say what? and start rocking out with Rockin' Body, the fun new body makeover system that was created by fitness expert and insanity creator, Sean T. Rockin' Body combines dance and fitness in a fun new way so you can achieve insane weight loss. I lost 30 pounds dancing. Now you can tone and tighten your abs, shrink and shape your hips and thighs, and lift and firm your booty, all while you're just dancing. I've lost 33 pounds. I feel sexy. And now, for a limited time, the complete $80 Rock and Body system is 75% off. That's right, Rock and Body is only $19.95. We'll even upgrade you to express shipping free. Get the complete Rock and Body system for only $19.95. Call 1-800-307-0417 or order online at rockandbody.com. 1-800-307-0417. Call now. I like to see your face. You've seen Ellen in 50 Shades. Mauga! I got the lead role because no one knows their way around a whip more than me. Now, from 50 Shades Darker, Jamie Dornan, plus Saints quarterback, Drew Brees. I love watching sports. I love playing sports. In fact, I'm wearing a sports bra right now. Tomorrow at 3 on News Channel 5. It's a miracle that springs forth to feed us, to clothe us, to bring us joy. A miracle prompted by rain and warm by the sun. But few realize without healthy soil below ground, there would be little life above it. Learn more about this miracle under our feet and how we're working with farmers and ranchers to unlock the secrets in the soil. Every year, tens of thousands of young people experience homelessness. to Medical Monday. We are talking about PAD today. If that doesn't sound familiar to you, it is peripheral arterial disease. And it's a disease that's kind of a, a little bit of a clue into something bigger and much worse is about ready to happen to you or could happen to you, I should say. I have Dr. Dan Wonder here with me who is an interventional radiologist. We appreciate your expertise today. Thank we had a caller on the line who accidentally hung up. Her name was Ruth and she said that she is having some aching in her legs and swelling in her knee and doesn't know if that's maybe a clue that something bigger is about ready to happen like a heart attack or a stroke. What should she do about it? How do people find their way to you? Um, 
via the website. I mean, mm -hmm. you can, you know, an intervention radiologist like like us, we have a we have a clinic, and Madison's our clinic. It's Premier Radiology Briarville. You can call for an appointment. Um, I'll see you in consultation, which means we bring you in, do an intake. My working with my nurse and myself, we complete physical and history. Mm -hmm. You know, everything, all operations you've had, try to figure out what's going on whether you're diabetic or not, which plays into it, of course, um, prior surgeries. And then we, you know, we, we look at your, you know, your symptoms. And in, this, in Ruth's case, you know, she has achiness in her legs. Is that all the time? Is it when she walks or exercises? You know, is it sharp? Is it dull? Is it numbness? Um, those things play into it. Um, the swelling, people always, you know, that always comes to the table. The swelling usually isn't an indicator that you have an arterial blockage. It's more of an indicator that you have too much fluid or you have a venous blockage or narrowing, a, a different problem ah. that we can uh, uh, work with. Sometimes it's swelling in a local area like around the knee and there's a fluid collection that we may have to work a draining or something, which we can do also. So it, it just kind of, you know, looking at the patient, listening to them mm -hmm. and then letting them tell you what's going on and, and based on experience, you know, figuring out what to do next. Yeah, little light bulbs have to go off when people say certain things. You go, okay, this takes me down this road, and then yeah. this takes me over this curve over here. Is that pretty fair? It is. Sometimes yeah. it's real evident. I mean, uh, an advanced diabetic might show up, be referred in for a non-healing wound on the foot, and they have like a big red toe that's about ready to fall off, and you know that it's obvious that you have to optimize the vascular flow to that toe so that they don't lose it. Mm -hmm. So. And PAD often goes hand in hand with diabetics, doesn't it, because of this reason? Yes, um, especially insulin dependent diabetics, not, not so much the diabetics that just take the oral medicine, mm -hmm. but the insulin dependent diabetics, they have a, it, it, they get hardening of the arteries at a very small level, and that's just why they have problems with their feet. They have problems with their kidneys and then they sometimes go into dialysis. They have problems with their vision and mm -hmm. their eyes and they have heart problems because, and as well as brain too, but those are the big areas where those little tiny arteries get calcified and they're almost impossible to open. Wow. I mean, because you're talking at a, like the tiniest level, which is why it's so important for diabetics, of course, to control their blood sugar from the very beginning to help prevent that process from occurring. We'll come back to this in just a bit, but I do want to hop to Mike who is on, or excuse me, David who is on the phone. David, good evening to you. Thank you for hanging in there with us for a second. What's your question tonight? Yes, I know a young lady who uh, I just recently witnessed her having <laughs> tremendous pain in her legs and hips and even in the groin area. Mm -hmm. And this sounds a lot like she's trying to use a heating pad to treat it with. So I've been telling her to go to the doctor for the longest. But I'm just wondering, is, I mean, could it even, could PAD travel even into the groin area and the legs? Okay, go ahead and hang up and uh, listen to your TV and let, let's talk to the doctor. It can. Yeah. I mean, it can. Um, it depends, you know, what I'm almost hearing a little bit there of, again, a neuropathy kind mm -hmm. of uh, problem, but that can be a peripheral arterial disease problem, a blockage. Um, it depends kind of if you talk to the patient, is it kind of in a distribution that follows where a nerve would go, or is it like the whole leg, you know, or is it part of the leg, like the top or the bottom? Those things help sort out what, what the disease process is. So. Um, and it depends again if you know if they're at rest or mm -hmm. if they're you know exercising. But those, these are the kind of people we see every day to sort out what the problem is and then, and try to take care of it with one of the tools we have at our disposal. A lot of people, I'm sure, come in and just say, "I'm in pain. I don't know why. Figure it out." And it's ha it's a mystery for you to solve, yeah. right? Yeah, it's true. Mostly with I mean with the legs, but also with the neck and the back. Yes, yeah, all. And, and, since we cover lots of different things besides PAD and, mm -hmm. and arterial disease, I see patients with all the different kinds of problems and, and sorting it into the right category is the first thing and then you can triage it down from there and figure out what to do, but yeah, it happens a lot. And it's, people may not be familiar with the terminology of PAD, what, what else is this kind of referred to when you hear people talking about this kind of pain and this kind of diagnosis? Um, if it refers to the arteries, sometimes they say PVD or peripheral vascular disease, um, atherosclerosis, you know, hardening of the arteries. Um, those are all those kind of things that I mean the same thing as, as, as PAD. If you let this go, will it lead to a heart attack? Will it lead to a stroke? 
if you let it go, it would, it, it, yes, it can. It can lead to those things, especially if you're, you know, you're talking about chest pain, you're talking about mini strokes that you're ignoring, you know, you can't talk, you can't see, mm -hmm. your face droops. Uh, with regard to your legs, if you're, you know, you got this achy pain that, you know, first you had like a weakness and then you had this achy pain when you walked and then your leg is numb and you can't move your toes you could lose your leg yeah you, I mean it, it can happen and I've seen I've seen it happen it's unfortunate but it's just because sometimes people don't realize what what the problem is mm -hmm. you know and that there is help that you yes. can do so. well what what can you do if someone comes in on the front side of this pain what do you do then <coughs> You know, root cause analysis in a sense, find out what the problem is. If it, you know, if it's arterial, we, you know, and it looks like it's advanced, um, especially with the legs, again, speaking with regard to the legs, you know, perform an arteriogram. We have facility in the office. We have an office based um, uh, facility where we can do all these procedures and, re you know, sedate and recover the patients right there. Um, a lot of times patients come in and the same day that they would come in with a problem such as this, um, you know, insurance providing right. you know, we can proceed right into a process of you know, treating the problem such as getting into that artery finding out where the blockage is at opening it with a variety of tools we have you know atherectomy catheters and lasers and stents and balloons to it increase the blood flow so the patient's leg regains function most of the options that you just went through are, are the options where the patient can then go home that day? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, of course, wow. yeah, they come in. They're, they spend about four hours in the office on average. The time they come in, we figure out what's going on. We you know, get them ready to sedate them, perform the procedure, recover them, and then send them home. It's about four to five hours. Wow. Somewhere's there. Yeah. Pretty incredible. It, it, it's, it's, it can be life-changing to people, honestly. I mean, people will come in with a numb leg, and when they leave four hours later, they say, I can feel the blood flow in my foot. And I, you know, I can walk wow. and I can pick my foot up now. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So That's be pretty satisfying to you as a doctor to say, wow, you know, this, this really worked. This helped. This person yeah. has a different change in their lifestyle now. Yes. Yeah, it, that's pretty cool. It is amazing. Okay, we have William, I do believe, if I listen correctly. William, are you on the line with yeah. me? Okay, hey, thanks for calling in tonight. What's your question? Oh, my question is that uh, I'm a diabetic mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not... Uh, numbness in my legs and feet, and uh, I have pain when I'm walking. I just wonder if, if some, some one doctor told me it might be neuropathy, but I don't know. I just uh, it just it, it, it's the, uh, the numbness started in my feet. It's worked up to my knee, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, like I said, they the doctor said he thought it was neuropathy. It's okay. called diabetes. I don't know. Well, let's talk about the difference. How would you know the difference? They, the problem is, is they go together. Oh. That's the problem a okay. lot of times. Now, you can have just straight neuropathy. Lots Which is of, what? It is, is lot, numbness. You have a problem with the nerve sensation in an extremity. So that just, that's all it means. It could be numbness. It could be tingling. It could be burning. Those are things from the nerves not functioning correctly. And there's lots of reasons that can happen. Um, but the problem is, is when you get blockage in your arteries, you can get the same symptoms. Oh. And if you're diabetic, I mean, the diabetics get neuropathy because that very, very tiny, little tiny arteries that go to the nerves get blocked mm -hmm. and then the nerves don't work. So you know, that they still may have blood flow to their foot, but the nerves aren't working because those arteries, those tiny little arteries are blocked. So, but in someone's case like this, you know, I'm not surprised if he doesn't have neuropathy. There's no mm -hmm. question. Almost all diabetics get neuropathy. Um, the problem is, is if they don't pay attention to the fact that there could also be blockages in the arteries and a lot of times you know <coughs> and that's not to slight anybody but you know checking those arteries every time someone comes into the doctor's office isn't really on the top of the list there's a lot of other things that you know you know internists and family docs have to yeah. do and to meet criteria and just to take care of people mm -hmm. and, and feeling pulses in the top of the foot to see if there's blood flow there is not really high there um, and everyone expects a diabetic to have a neuropathy so let me ask you this, can you do anything for neuropathy? For neuropathy, I can't, no. Okay. I mean, other than there's medicines that we can prescribe mm -hmm. to help kind of, you know, um, stem that neuropathy, kind of take away the sensations they're having, mm -hmm. but you can't open those arteries because they're microscopic. Okay. So that's that's a process, again, watching your blood sugar and mm -hmm. stuff like that as a diabetic is important. Um, but, you know, there's medications that can be taken, but the, the thing that's important is those same people will get blockages of the bigger arteries that keep the tissue alive, mm -hmm. and if you don't pay attention to that and open those arteries, 
arteries, then you can lose toes, feet, legs. So if you have the neuropathy, you're a diabetic, you know this, what are the tests that need to be done to make sure it doesn't lead into PAD? I mean, how, do you, how can you keep this from happening? Because it's very serious. We offer a free screen at our offices. Uh, it's called an AVI screen. Um, it's not, there's no cost to it. We do it at all of our facilities. You come in and we check your blood pressure in your arm, mm -hmm. check your blood pressure in your legs. We make a ratio, and if that number's not right, then, and I, I read almost all of them, then we say, you know, you need to come on in, we need to check you out. Um, now, sometimes it can be falsely elevated, but, you know, we also have a little, uh, little uh, safety valve there. We look at the little waveform mm -hmm. and, uh, on that study, and if it's abnormal, then that's, even though the number's okay, the waveform doesn't look good, then we say, you still need to come on in. So that's the best way to do what it. What was it's, that test called again? It's called a, a screening ABI. ABI, okay. Uh, for ankle brachial index, arm ankle index. Okay. It's because the breath pressure in the arm is supposed to be the same as in the legs. Wouldn't make sense, and if yeah. they're not, then there's something wrong, and it usually always happens with the legs. Wow. Okay, some great so information. Simple. Yeah. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. I know that we have Irene and Thomas and Tony on the phone waiting. We'll get to your calls right after this break. Stay with us. This is a Storm 5 HD weather update. Sign up for Weather Call at NewsChannel5.com. Sunshine, blue skies widespread across Tennessee and Kentucky this afternoon. It was a beautiful day outside. Hopefully you got to enjoy some sunshine. If you didn't, you'll get another chance tomorrow before clouds work back into the mid-state. Uh, taking a look at temperatures, they've been pretty mild this afternoon as well. And that will be the theme at least for the beginning of your work week the last few days of January. This is a look at current conditions across the southeast and of course right here in Nashville. Reminder, this is updated on the hour. Overnight tonight, we're down to 40. That'll be in the city, outside the city, cooler than that. So waking up in the mid to upper 30s. And then tomorrow, 61 degrees, sunshine, blue skies. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Cloud cover works back in for the middle of the week as we welcome February. Could see a few spritzes and sprinkles around Thursday, but the better chances for rain, and it's meager at that, is Friday morning and in particular Sunday, looking like widespread showers as we end the weekend. I believe in you. Just four simple words. But to a child in need, they mean the world. I believe in you means you have potential. You are special. You matter. When you support a child through Save the Children, you're saying, I believe in you. Your help says to a child, I believe that you deserve a successful start to life and a solid foundation to build upon. I believe you're worthy of good nutrition, quality health care, and the opportunity that education unlocks. Becoming a Save the Children advocate sends a powerful message of support. It says, I am here for you, to lift you up, to cheer you on, and to celebrate your success. I believe in you. Just four simple words that can bring hope, that can change a life. Visit sponsor.savethechildren.org slash believe today and tell a child in need, I believe in you. Welcome back to Medical Monday. I'm here with Dr. Dan Wonder. He's an interventional radiologist. And one thing that you see a lot of is PAD, peripheral arterial disease. I'm getting better at that. I'm yes, getting yes, faster at it. It is a mouthful. It's very important, something that you check out and something that you can treat. You were saying to me, and this is a good conversation I think needs to be had, is that a lot of people will go for their annual exam to their family doctor. Those family doctors have a lot to cover in a little bit of time. And sometimes some of the things that you focus in on are not what they necessarily focus on. Can you explain the difference? Yeah, it's, you know, I don't do a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of things a radiologist doesn't do. You don't expect them to do. Manage blood pressure medications, you know, manage your insulin, you know, check your A1C to see if the blood sugar is good or your cholesterol mm -hmm. medicine. So if you're picking up the phone to call us and call me or, or someone sends you to me because they have some kind of suspicion that you have a blockage of an artery, you know, that's primarily what we focus on and those kind of symptoms the, the, and those problems that all that goes together. Um, so I'm going to be able to focus my examination on those signs and symptoms that someone else just doesn't honestly have the time to spend on. Right. You have some different tools in your toolkit, perhaps, yes. and a different amount of time to do those with. Okay. We're going to jump to the lines. Uh, I have Irene waiting ever so patiently. Good evening, Irene. What's your question? Yes, I suffer from foot cramps ankle cramps. Usually it happens in both of them at the same time and several times a month. Anyway, I took magnesium, I took potassium. Sometimes they say you're dehydrated, so I drink tons of water. 
But anyway, so this is my problem. Several times a month, they're very painful. So much that uh, I just about faint. Oh. Now, did you say this is mainly while you're sleeping, or can it be any time during the day? Uh, any time or night. Okay. What are your thoughts, Dr. Wonder? Well, all the things that she mentioned, you know, the potassium, the hyd you know, hydration, those things are all important. Um, foot cramps in and, them so in and of themselves may or may not be an indicator that you have a blockage, um, especially if it's bilateral. It's possible. It's good to be, she should be screened. Somebody should check her out and make sure she's got good blood flow into the feet. I suspect she probably does, and you can just have what we call idiopathic cramps. I mean, they just, they cramp. I mean, her feet cramp. Everyone's a little bit different. It's just the muscles, you know. Um, but what she's doing is, you know, those are important things, of course, but you probably should just rule out, make sure she doesn't have any arterial disease for the simple study. So come to someone like you, who is an interventional radiologist, and let them, let you do yeah. that, the testing that you need to do. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully you can start there, Irene, and, and get some relief. That does not sound like any fun at all. Tom Thomas is on the line. Thomas, what's your question tonight? Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. Sure. Uh, this is Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed. I'm one of uh, Dr. Wonder's uh, patients. Oh, wonderful. Yes. I had a uh, procedure by Dr. Wonder. Dr. Wonder, do you remember me? I'm Ahmed. Yes, sir. I do. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I want to take my time to thank you very much. I was. Uh, I had my problem. I had vein malfunction in my right leg. And I went to so many doctors, no one could find my, uh, my problem to my solution. And you was the one of the best doctors I've met in my life. You gave me my freedom back. I'm able to walk, enjoy my life. And uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, and I uh, have my freedom back. Well, I mean, it's nice to hear from you tonight. Um, gosh, it's always nice to get a pat on the back, isn't yeah. it? And we were talking about that. Was, as you're treating people, a lot of times you can get them out the door and, and walking and feeling better in just a couple of hours. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It took a little bit longer with him, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it that you do remember. That says a lot. Yeah. All right, let's hop to uh, Tony's on the line waiting for us. Hi, Tony. What's your question? Yeah, I got three questions for okay. you. It may or may not be in your area, but I'd like some advice. Uh, my first question is, do you believe in spinal deep compression where they stretch the spine out? Is that a really good thing or is it a joke? Are they making a killing off of it or does it really help people? That's my first question. Okay, let's start there. Spinal decompression. Well, I, I, I don't do that um, and I don't do spinal surgery. I do injections to help the spine, which can be helpful sometimes. I'm not, I really don't have any, you know, experience with that. Um, but it can be helpful in certain situations like spinal stenosis, you, uh, that, but that's an open surgical procedure. And I'm just stretching the spine on some of those machines. I'm not really sure too much about that, honestly. Not really your expertise. Okay, no. hit us with your second question, Tony. Second question is, uh, diabetes runs in my family, and I've never been tested. I want to know what the warning signs are, and how involved is it just to be tested? Okay. Uh, you don't really do the diagnosis for diabetes, right? No, not really. But, I mean, fam your family doc should be able to help you there. They can check your blood glucose. They can check your, your urine glucose to see what those numbers are. Um, if you're, you know, if you're getting up, if you're drinking lots of water and you're getting up and you're all night long and peeing, then that might be something to be thinking about. Yeah. Okay. All right. And third question, Tony, what is it? Third question is, I had... Uh, surgery on my spine mm -hmm. they had to cut part of my bone out in the back of my spine it was in the l3 and 4 area and uh to this day my left leg will either be totally healthy or it'll get stone cold or i'll lose my balance mm. and uh like i said i'm basically going to shop and get a tune up but uh, I want to know if you know what you think I might be up against. Okay. I'm going to put you on hold. Listen to your TV, Tony. Does that set off any alarm bells? Um, a little out of my field again. It's mm -hmm. spinal surgery um, mostly and, and some of the sequelae that can happen from spinal surgery. I mean, and it's a good procedure in certain people. You know, there are known 
things that occur such as scarring on the nerve roots and things like that that can cause some problems that may need to be addressed subsequently. So that's probably what he needs to check into back to his surgeon. Okay, Tony, you got lots of answers right there. Good deal. Okay, let's hop to Tanya. Tanya's on the phone. Thank you for your call. Go ahead with your question. Hey, Doc, I just want to know, I went to bed one day and I woke up three days later and I found that I couldn't walk anymore. Okay, that's pretty wild. Yeah, that is pretty wild. Yeah, um, they told me if I were to slept two more days, I'd have been dead. And they blamed it on uh, lack of potassium. Okay. Okay, let me put you on hold. Listen to you. Do you does that... That's pretty wild. That's, yeah, that's a that's wild a, that's, occurrence. That's, that's a neurology kind of issue. It's okay, beyond so my scope of expertise for sure. Okay. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we've talked a lot about the leg pain when it comes to PAD, but there are also some other warning signs. So stick around. We're going to hit those right when we come back. have a collision, you're probably going to call yours or the other driver's auto insurance. So remember, insurance preferred body shops are working to save the insurance company money. It's why you're being sent there. At Price's Collision, we work for you, not the insurer. The choice is yours. If you want it prepared right by the company that's certified by most manufacturers, the best choice is Price's Collision, a perfect repair with a lifetime guarantee. Ah. If you want to shed the fat and sculpt your body to get that slim, sexy look of your dreams, then you need to stop working out. Say what? And start rocking out with Rockin' Body, the fun new body makeover system that was created by fitness expert and insanity creator Sean T. Rockin' Body combines dance and fitness in a fun new way so you can achieve insane weight loss. I lost 30 pounds dancing. Now you can tone and tighten your abs, shrink and shape your hips and thighs, and lift and firm your booty, all while you're just dancing. I've lost 33 pounds. I feel sexy. And now, for a limited time, the complete $80 Rock and Body system is 75% off. That's right, Rock and Body is only $19.95. We'll even upgrade you to express shipping free. Get the complete Rock and Body system for only $19.95. Call 1-800-307-0417 or order online at rockandbody.com. 1-800-307-0417. Call now. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty. Welcome back to Medical Mondays. We are talking with Dr. Dan Wonder, who is a interventional radiologist. So if you've ever been referred to one or someone said, you should go see one of these guys, and you have a question about, well, what do you do? Now is the time to call and get some free advice and free tips. The number 615-737-PLUS is the number to call, or 7587. We've already had a ton of calls tonight. We appreciate that. Hopefully, Dr. Wonder's helping you out and helping to sort things out. We're also specifically talking about PAD, or peripheral arterial disease. Let's back up a little bit if folks are just joining us. What is that? Uh, it is hardening of the arteries in simple terms where the uh, the, 
the uh, arteries that carry the blood flow down to the legs or out to the arms or even up to the head uh, get narrowed down mm -hmm. with plaque, you know, fat and cholesterol and stuff like that and narrow the blood vessel so that there's less blood flow to those areas. And then you start to have symptoms such as weakness or tiredness or cramping or if it's up to the head, it's mini strokes, you know, if it's in the heart, it's chest pain, but we don't do the heart, but it's all the same process. Mm -hmm. It happens all through your body, not just in one area. It's not like you have hardening of the arteries in just one leg. It'll be in both legs. One will be a little bit worse than the other. That's the one that brings you in to see us first. Uh -huh. We take pictures of both of them when we work it up and we see it's in the other side. It's just not as bad. But once we fix up one leg and make the blood flow well and symptoms go away, then the person's like, Wait now you need to fix the other one. <laughs> so, um, but the same process, you know, in the, in the heart, it causes chest pain. In the neck, it causes many strokes to the brain. So it's the same uniform process throughout the body. If you're cursed with it, you know, it, it's, it's everywhere. Does everybody, no matter how well you take care of yourself, have plaque in their arteries? To some degree, yeah. yeah. I mean, it really is. I mean, I think, you know, they, the, the data goes back that on, on autopsies from Vietnam that you know they have found 18 year olds that have plaque in their mm -hmm. body so a lot of it's genetic predisposition mm -hmm. I mean if your family had a you know, bad history then you're gonna have probably have a bad history it's like those the poor people that you know the father died when there's 45 mm -hmm. because of a heart attack that's not just happenstance or bad you know ate too many McDonald's I mean it's probably been going on for generations sure. and if we live longer so it affects us different ways now. You told me that the plaque is, um, when it starts, is kind of like this fatty, waxy substance, and then it, and it gets harder, and that's when the blood really has a hard time getting through the artery. What can you do to get that out of there? You'll, you'll hear balloons tossed around and stents tossed around, but what do you do with those balloons and stents? What are they? Oh. The, they're the tools that we use. They're the tools in our toolbox that mm -hmm. we use to fix the arteries, basically. Um, well, since we work through little tiny holes and little tiny tubes inside the arteries, methods have been devised in order to, to make those arteries wider using those tools through little areas. So once we take a picture of an artery to find out how blocked it is, then we can, depending on where it is, we can pick a balloon, let's say. A balloon basically is a controlled tear or stretch of the artery to make it wider. So that it's still, you still have the plaque in there, you just, you just stretch everything out to make uh -huh. it a little bit wider. That's okay. kind of how things first started out, the second generation. But anyway, how things kind of first started out. Stents come in usually sometimes on balloons sometimes not on balloons but we can put them in a certain place where there's a narrowing and it kind of acts like the scaffolding in a mine to hold the shaft open mm -hmm. a stent will hold the artery open okay. so you put it anywhere you want it and you blow up a balloon and basically seat it in place and it makes that artery open um, the problem with stents is, is that sometimes they can develop narrowings inside them because they're a foreign body inside you. So that's why drug eluting stents for the hearts mm -hmm. were developed and now we have them for the legs too. Um, another tool we have is what's called an atherectomy catheter. Atherectomy, I mean that's what the plaque is, it's an atheroma. So we have catheters and they're, they're different, there's five or six different kinds. Some of them we have a laser that we use too. But basically all those things do is remove the plaque from the artery, actually take it out. Okay. I mean we have a, a device I use the most, we basically, we can see that narrowing and we can go down there and we can cut the plaque right out of the artery. It goes inside the catheter, a special kind of catheter. We pull it out of the body and we empty it out and we go back down and we cut more out. So it's like we're wow. like you're shaving Hawaiian ice inside the artery. You know? Okay, because I, I've heard before if that plaque were to get loose, that's when you have you know the stroke or whatever, if it goes to your brain, right? So this is a way you can pull plaque out wherever it may be. Why wouldn't you do that in all cases then? Why would you still do a balloon or a stent if you can go get that plaque and get it out? It, there's certain places you, you can't, you shouldn't use it. I mean, the arteries to the brain, you shouldn't use it in, of course. Um, and, that there, and there are certain arteries, like kidney arteries, that get mm -hmm. plaque. You have to be careful because there's supporting structures around the arteries, and the, the devices are sharp, and they can sometimes cut holes in the arteries. And if you use them in places where there's not much supporting tissue, you can have disastrous consequences. Mm -hmm. So you have to use them in certain places where they've been vetted, and are approved in so to speak so you can if you do have something where you have an, an arterial injury that you have to seal up you have the ability to get it sealed and the blood that may come out is contained pretty and not life-threatening you've said with all of these tools it starts with a <coughs> picture of the artery we know yes. an x-ray takes picture of the bones yeah. what takes a picture of the artery how do you get that it's it, the same x-ray really okay. but the, it's a special x-ray called an um, 
called the digital subtraction x-ray, which means we take a picture, let's say we put a catheter in the leg, and then we, like over the thigh, then we step on a button and it starts taking a picture of that thigh, and it gets what's called a mask. So it gets a series of pictures, and then it kind of turns, the picture turns ah. gray, and then you inject the x-ray contrast, and it goes through this area, and then you can see what that artery looks like, because that's the only thing on the picture that hasn't been subtracted away. And you can see how the blood is moving or not moving. Yes. Ah. And where the blockages or narrowings are at. That's how they, that's how we do the legs and the arms the kidneys. That's how they do the heart. That's how we do the head and the neck. That's all those are done that same way. There's nuances and fancy mm -hmm. things that we can do with it, but that's the basics of it. Really. Okay, very good. I got more questions for you, but I know that Maddie is on the line. Maddie, thank you for calling in. What's your question? Yes, I wanted to know, um, when I'm asleep at night, when I, um, when I first get up in the morning, I stretch, and I get these pains in the back of my leg, and my toes come all, they come apart, and then I try to stand. I mean, it's so painful, and it's like, I don't know if it's blood clogs in the back of my leg. I don't know what it is. And then I'm having a light, sharp, sharp pain in my side. It feels like electrician or something in my side. Do you know what that is? That's probably probably pinched nerves in your back. You have back problems? No, I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to actually have back pain to have back problems. The, the, man, the, the, the nerves can be, I'm sorry. Go ahead, baby. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the nerves in your back can be pinched and not actually hurt in your back. It can show up as pain in your legs. It's more common, just like you said, when you get up in the morning after you haven't been moving all night long and you start to move, and then those, those, you have that pain in your legs or sometimes in your back. It can be sharp, electrical. That's a very classic kind of description. And if you move around some, does it get better? Yes, it does when I move around. There you go. That's what it is. You got some problems with your back. So what does she do about that? Well, you know, she can come see someone like myself. Mm -hmm. um, there are also a lot of other qualified people to see, you know, orthopedic surgeons, spine surgeons, um, all are going to kind of funnel you to the same place, you know, check your reflexes, check your strength, possibly get an MRI study, and then determine if there is a nerve, you know, whether some conservative physical therapy is good to do, mm -hmm. injection therapy like epidurals or nerve root blocks, um, or it may need that she it may be that she needs to actually have surgery mm -hmm. by a surgeon. So, okay. and if if that's the case, and, and you know we're seeing them when it's the point where they need to have surgery, we refer them to a, a spine surgeon, an ortho surgeon, neurosurgeon to take care of that. Okay, Miss Maddie, and just so you know, we're going to give Dr. Wonder's information out here pretty soon. So just grab a pen and a paper, and uh, hopefully that'll be a good place to start. But thank you for calling in. Well, thank you. Good to talk to you tonight. All right, we have more calls coming in, and we're going to try to get to as many people as possible. We have Margaret on the line. Margaret, good evening to you. What's your question? Okay, um, right leg, left leg. Having a problem with the right leg swelling. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of pain, but it swells. Okay, had an arteriogram from the groin down to the ankle. Couldn't find the problem. And I then switched from one doctor to the other doctor. Still no answer. What's your answer? Mm -hmm. That's frustrating. If I was that good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, is it swelling all the time? Yes, pretty much. Is it worse at the end of the day or? Is it, ma'am, is it worse at the end of the day? No, it's the same all the time. Same all the time. Okay. Have you ever had blood clot in that leg before? Pardon me? Have you ever had blood clot in that leg before? No. Okay. And the other leg doesn't swell or it does? It doesn't. It doesn't. And it's the right leg? Right. Okay. There, there, there is a problem that people can have where one of the veins inside your pelvis above your uterus can get compressed by an artery and that makes the blood back up in that vein. Does somebody look for that for you? Uh, no. Okay. That's something that can be looked at. We start with an ultrasound to look at that to see if the blood flow is in the right direction in the vein and sometimes we have to actually do a venogram, not an arteriogram, but a, a, 
an x-ray study of the vein to see if the vein is compressed because if the vein is compressed or squished, the blood's going to back up in the leg, cause it to swell. Okay, what was that again you said you might do? A venogram. Venogram. V-E-I-N? Yeah. V-E-N-O-G-R-A-M. Venogram. V-E-N-O-G-R-A-M. Okay. Margaret, we're glad you called in. Hopefully you can uh, find the right person, whether it be Dr. Wonder or someone like him, to go to and, and have that done and get some answers. I know that people must come in and say, I'm just so frustrated. Find yes. it. Yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> Very true. Okay, we're going to try and jump to one more caller. Barbara's on the line. Barbara, what's your question? Yes, uh, doctor, I have uh, cellulitis and lymphedema in both of my legs. I had to have surgery on my leg, my left leg, three years ago because I developed an ulcer and it was leaking fluid. And um, I'm on multiple medications. I'm on Lasix, I'm on Coumadin blood thinner, I'm on uh, blood pressure medicine, I'm on a lot of medications. Uh, the reason I'm on um, Coumadin is because I also have AFib. And I was wondering, could this seemed like it kind of happened all at the same time, the diagnosis with the AFib and, the di and then the leg problem. I, I wonder, what, could that be an underlying cause of AFib? Because, you know, your heart doesn't beat properly, the blood flow is not good. And they told me my, that my legs were starved for blood, mm. is how the doctor said it. But uh, I wondered if the AFib... Could that be the, you know, the underlying causes, one of the causes of it? Okay, Margaret, go ahead and hang up and listen to your TV and see what Dr. Wonder has to say. Uh, a little hard to say. It, it sounds kind of complex. Um, but it depends on where that ulcer is at. If that ulcer she talked about was mm -hmm. on the inner aspect of the leg and the, with all the swelling and the lymphedema she's talking about, um, even though she mentioned blocked arteries, I have a feeling she more often has blocked veins and the blood isn't getting up the leg like it's supposed to. Um, a lot of times people have what they call reflux disease where one of the sets of veins in the leg will not bring the blood back up to the heart. Oh. It kind of just sits there in the leg and just pulsates and they get so much pressure on the leg. It can, if the, some of the veins are close to the skin, they can erode right through and you get ulceration. Oh, wow. Um, now, I'm not sure because I don't know enough sure. about her, but that sounds more of a venous problem, a venous problem, you know, mm -hmm. than an arterial problem. She may have that too, but, um, and I don't think they're necessarily related one and one. So. Okay. Now, do you treat vein problems? I, some of the vein problems I treat. Um, the, I, uh, I treat the ones like the, the last collar mm -hmm. where the blockage is up in the pelvis where we have to like, stent the vein open so the blood comes out of the leg. I do more of that. Um, treating like the, the varicose veins, I don't, I, have, I don't have time to do that, right. unfortunately. I'm covered up with too many other things, but I have partners that do. Okay, okay, good to know. We're, we have one more segment. When we come back, more with Dr. Wonder. Stay with us. This is a Storm 5 HD weather update. Sign up for Weather Call at newschannel5.com. Sunshine, blue skies widespread across Tennessee and Kentucky this afternoon. It was a beautiful day outside. Hopefully you got to enjoy some sunshine. If you didn't, you'll get another chance tomorrow before clouds work back into the mid-state. Uh, taking a look at temperatures, they've been pretty mild this afternoon as well. And that will be the theme at least for the beginning of your work week the last few days of January. This is a look at current conditions across the southeast and of course right here in Nashville. Reminder, this is updated on the hour. Overnight tonight, we're down to 40. That'll be in the city, outside the city, cooler than that, so waking up in the mid to upper 30s. And then tomorrow, 61 degrees, sunshine, blue skies. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Cloud cover works back in for the middle of the week as we welcome February. Could see a few spritzes and sprinkles around Thursday, but the better chances for rain, and it's meager at that, is Friday morning and in particular Sunday, looking like widespread showers as we end the weekend. Tuesday on Talk of the Town, you've heard of tailgating, but this Sunday, everybody's home gating to watch the big game. See some favorite ways to make this year's viewing party as memorable as the game itself. Then, what if Nashville's best boutiques all got together for a big sale in one place? It's happening Saturday, and we have a preview of all the deals. Plus, we have the perfect dessert to make for Valentine's Day. Get the recipe for this easy but impressive Italian treat to top off a special dinner. All coming your way Tuesday at 11. If we want to improve America's health care system, let's start by improving the health of Americans. 
Despite the best doctors, hospitals, and medical advancements, Americans are not as healthy as they should be. We spend too much on treatment and not enough on wellness and prevention. We need a system based on primary care. When patients have a medical home and a long-term relationship with a doctor, the result is a longer, healthier life and reduced medical costs for everyone. Let's make America a place where health is primary. Thank you for joining us on this Medical Monday. Dr. Wonder has given us lots of answers to lots of questions. We appreciate that. We've been talking a lot about PAD, and we all, we've been saying the leg pain. The leg pain is the big clue. There are other clues as well. What should people be looking for? There are some more subtle clues that people, you know, again, may think they're getting older, but if you start to lose the hair on your leg, yeah, um, that's a sign. That's one of the subtle signs, more subtle signs that you're, you're have less blood flow. Um, the skin gets shinier. Um, tighter, mm -hmm. sometimes even a little bit red. Um, the the nail, the composition of your nails, your toenails can change a little bit. Uh, dry, flaky skin, eh, not quite so you know specific, but it's it's also in that ballpark of you know things that are going on that you should pay attention to. These are, but you know, a lot of people can have one you know, of these things, but yeah. maybe not all of them. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have PAD because mm -hmm. you have that, of course, but that's one of the one of the signs that may make you think about it. Sure. Yeah. When should you call someone like you or your doctor and say, I think I, I need to ask this question. I think I need an expert to see me. Sooner than later. Okay. Always better sooner than later. Get them in. If even if you know, even if we get someone in, they have mild blockages, mm -hmm. you know, thirty percent blockages in their legs, and they have a strong family history. It's somebody that we should follow you know, every six months to a year, depending on how bad it is, to make sure that we, when it gets to the point where it does need to be treated, they're aware of what we do and we can get in and treat it, right. as opposed to waiting, you know, too awful long and then we're trying to play catch up and open arteries that have been blocked for years. Because after that plaque, that soft plaque you talked about, yeah. starts to get more fibrous, then it calcifies. And I imagine it looks different on the scans, right, on the pictures? Uh, it does a little bit. You yeah. can see some of the calcium, you really can. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to be the calcified stuff, it's really hard to get yeah. open. You can do it, but it's really hard to get open. Okay, with that word of warning, I want to give you the numbers to call. We're going to put them up on the screen. I promise we would. Here are the numbers. Kind of the generic line to call, and then they will get you to the right person. 615 98 6033 or go on to Medical Mondays at ouradvancedhealth.com. And Dr. Wonder, you have your office number. What is it? 615-986-6411. Uh, mm -hmm. Say it again one more time. 615-986-6411. That'll get it right to you. Right to our office, yes. Hopefully people will start feeling better pretty soon. Thank you. You've Thank been you. wonderful to have on the show tonight. Hopefully you will be feeling better soon if you're dealing with one of these ailments. And I hope you have a fantastic night. We'll see you next week.